Hello and welcome to another clinical skills session. Today I'm sat down by a foot. No, in, in seriousness, uh, today we're going to be looking at how to strap uh, an ankle after it's been injured, perhaps with an inversion injury, uh, so affecting the lateral aspect of uh, the ankle, affecting the ligaments there. So a lot of the time you'll see people um, strapping various body parts with physio or KT tape. And you know, there's a lot of reason that these are useful things when in regard to having an athlete you know, dealing with a chronic injury. However, we should not be using this when it comes to strapping an ankle that has had a significant injury and we're concerned about strain, stress or maybe even rupture of the ligaments. Instead, we're going to use this white zinc oxide tape. Now, this is particularly important because unlike the KT tape, zinc oxide tape is very rigid. There's no stretch to it. So where we place the foot bound by this is where the foot will stay. That is important because with damage to the ligaments, we want to try and reduce excess movement, which we will achieve with zinc oxide tape, but wouldn't with KT tape. Also, as a minor thing, KT tape needs scissors to cut, whereas with this, you can often just rip um, with your own fingers, um, because we can go across horizontally, but not longitudinally. So in terms of strapping up an ankle, what we need to do is have the calf supported so that the ankle is free uh, in space so that you can work for it. Ideally, have the patient on a bed and yourself seated in the chair. Before we start, obviously, we're going to want to gel our hands as ever. And then we are going to confirm where we've got an issue with the ankle. So is there pain here? Slightly. OK, so we on this ankle, we're suspecting issue with the ATFL, the anterior talofibular ligament. So we're going to start off by actually creating a loop at the top of the uh, ankle, just before the calf. This is going to be our locking strap. So in terms of strapping the ankle, we're going to start off with just a small uh, loop around the leg. So if you could lift up the leg for me. And we're going to make sure this comes around the ankle, but hasn't gone all the way around. So we've still got a gap. Now that nearly going all the way around is very important. We want to keep this space. The reason being is if the ankle's been damaged, it will swell, most likely at night. And if we've put a constrictive band all the way around the ankle, when the tissue swells, that's going to cause an awful lot of pain. So this will allow us to anchor our other straps to it, but we want to make sure it hasn't gone completely circumferential around the leg. We're going to start off by uh, putting a stirrup on. When we're doing this, we need to try and keep the patient's foot dorsiflex as best we can. Sometimes the patient can help with that. And we're going to start off just by putting stirrups into the ankle. So we're going to begin where we've um, put the lock-off tape, and that's going to help us. We're going all the way down, pressing in around over the lateral malleolus, up, and then across the medial malleolus. And we're again, we're going to tear, tear off. We need to make sure that's nicely stuck down everywhere. Now, it's very important that we have the ankle dorsiflexed as we're doing this, because we're going to try and keep the foot in this position, which the zinc oxide tape will let us do. You could argue we're trying to lock the ankle in position. And we're probably going to put another of these on as well, coming a little bit further forwards this time and coming a little bit further back. So we're covering much further round the base of the heel, around, and then coming up along at the back. And again, tearing off nice and simply. Okay. And we're going to make sure these are nicely pressed down. Okay, so at this point we can see how we're getting a little bit of reduction in movement because we're holding the foot dorsiflexed and this will cause the zinc oxide tape to attempt to stretch. So some people will apply two, um, some people will do three of these and if need be the, um, and the patient is able to without pain, they can keep, try and help keep their foot in dorsiflexion. So I'm going to put three on 
again coming back around the ankle and dorsiflexing up to the front. And we want to make sure that everything is nice and stuck down before we move forwards. Okay. The next bit that we're going to do is our figure of sixes. So we're starting off on uh, the medial side of the leg, again, beginning from our locked off position, coming down over the lateral malleolus, around the base of the heel, and back to where we started. And we can do one going the opposite direction as well. So coming across all the way down, across the medial malleolus this time, and then back up to where we've got that cross. Yes, we have obviously crossed over the tape here, but that shouldn't cause quite the same problem because we're further down the leg. Now, some people will stop at this point with just the, um, the figure of six in place, which might be reasonable if we're dealing with a mild sprain. But I think it's better to go the, um, the whole hog and put on an additional um, area where we're going to put a heel lock in place. So again, we're going to start off on the medial side, going a little bit higher, round to the side, uh, to the back end of the lateral malleolus, and we're going to come round over the base of the heel, and we're coming back round, across, and all the way up again. So once more, we've attached back to the, um, our starting point. And I'm going to do another one of those, again coming across, but a wee bit lower. So all the way down, around, around the back of the ankle. So dorsiflexing up as we do so. Up. And in. Now once we've done that, we've got quite a lot of tissue at the um, sides. So again, we're going to want to try and lock that off. So if you could lift up the foot for me, all the way up. And we're going to lock where we did last time. Bring it round and making sure that we're not going circumferential all the way through. So with this nicely strapped in, we can see there is some movement of the foot, but I'm not getting um, that much. We can say that we've stabilised the ankle, but we're going to see much reduction of movement in terms of that uh, lateral uh, and medial movement there. So we're protecting over this area. Now, as you go throughout the day, moving your foot forwards and backwards, this zinc oxide tape is going to begin to give slightly. So you need to have enough with you to make sure you can replace this every 24 hours in order to give maximal protection to the ankle. And we're just going to show you now with the KT tape, which we've applied earlier on, how much movement you get there compared to what we've got here. So to highlight the point we made at the very start, here is the ankle which uh, we've dressed up with KT or physio tape just for um, you know, a bit of prep before the session. And as you can see, there is just a huge amount of movement here. This is not going to provide support to an injured uh, ankle ligament. So don't use physio tape when it comes to strapping a suspected um, ligamentous damage on an ankle. Make sure you use the zinc oxide tape. And with that, the zinc oxide tape, as you're pushing and prodding during the day, you know, moving, using your foot as it were, then that will begin to give over time. So make sure you replace the zinc oxide tape every 24 hours so that you're not putting that ankle at risk of undue movement, keeping in mind that it's the movement with these ligaments damaged that can actually re uh, lead to um, fractures of uh, the, uh, the bones underneath when we get that excess movement with the bones pushing into one another. So that completes our overview of how to uh, provide strapping to a sprained ankle. If you found this useful, please uh, give the video a like and maybe put, put down in the comment what other areas of acute medicine you'd like us to look at. 
Take care and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.